Intel have just launched their new i9-9900K as well as a number of other chips including the 9700K, 9600K and a few other chips as well so feel free to go check out plenty of other reviews on those to see different benchmarks that I ne haven't necessarily done but this video is all about the comparison between the 9900K which is Intel's new 8 core 16 thread chip with this, the Ryzen 2700X, AMD's current highest end kind of desktop tier CPU that is also 8 cores and 16 threads. This should be interesting. I should probably clarify the spec of the 9900K. So as I said, it is an 8 core 16 thread CPU, a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz with a boost of actually 5 gigahertz. It's kind of crazy. Um, all core boost is sitting around about 4.8 to 4.9 depending on application. But again, that's very impressive to see with all 8 cores. You also have 16 megabytes of Intel smart cache and a 95 watt TDP. But otherwise, that is the, the majority of the spec that you need to know for this video. Of course, in comparison, the 2700X is a still 8 core 16 thread chip with 20 megabytes of L3 cache, but actually has a, a very similar base clock, but its boost clock is a bit lower. Its overall single core base clock is 4.35 gigahertz with its all core base, or all core boost rather, sitting around about 4.2 gigahertz. That means that the Intel chip just by clock speed alone is about 17% faster. So now you know what the chips are like and the spec of them, let's take a look at the results. So we're gonna start off with Cinebench here. This one is quite surprising. So single threaded is what you'd expect, 17% faster, but multi-threaded is only 12% faster for Intel, which is quite, as I said, surprising here. In terms of Asus Realbench, we're looking at 14% faster on the system score, and I'll leave the rest of the scores on my website if you're interested. In terms of 3D Mark Firestrike, that one is 18% faster for Intel, which is about what you'd expect comparing the clock speeds and slight architecture differences that make this a bit faster for Intel. In terms of the Blender BMW test, this one is also 18% faster, again, fairly expected, but with the Premiere Pro test, which is me rendering my own video, the Ryzen second gen unboxing video, that one is actually only 10% faster for Intel, which is a pretty significant difference when you consider the, the clock speed gap that is there. Moving on to the gaming results, this where it gets interesting. Now, of course, we saw the principal technologies report that showed Intel 50% faster, and um, that's probably not quite right here. Um, I'll show you my uh, percentages and all that in a sec, but um, to give you an idea, I was testing at 1080p uh, and, again, uh, multiple runs and all that sort of stuff. Um, I was testing GTA 5, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, and Fortnite. Uh, GTA 5 on very high settings, uh, Battlegrounds on Ultra, and Fortnite on Epic. Of course, bear in mind, GTA 5 is generally known as a mostly Intel optimized games so keep that in mind as you're you know listening to the results but uh, generally speaking 181 fps average on the intel chip with then 144 fps average on the ryzen chip which is a 25.7 percent uh, performance improvement over the ryzen chip for uh, the 9900k um, I would mention though, I did have a bit of an issue with uh, the Ryzen chip uh, in terms of its FPS as my uh, 1440p result was, was actually identical to my 1080p result. So I don't know if you can claim full victory on Intel side here as well. It will be faster. I don't know that this is a, a fully fair result. So just bear that in mind. Um, in terms of Battlegrounds, uh, the 9900K had 147 FPS with the uh, AMD chip on 135. So that's only an 8.9 or 9% performance improvement. Improvements. And then Fortnite was 193 for Intel and 178 for AMD, which is an 8.4% improvement. A few other things to note here, Intel has actually started using solder for the 9900K and the new 9 series chips, which is actually great to see uh, matches Ryzen and means that the thermals aren't as horrific as before. Um, my testing with the exact same cooler showed that AMD was actually about 10 degrees cooler on average still, but the overall power draw was fairly similar. So. Um, I guess you can take either how you like there. But the overall conclusion here is that if you average every single percentage difference that you've seen in this video, all of which have obviously been pro Intel here, um, if you average all of that out, you get 15%. You get a 15% faster chip, which bearing in mind that the clock speed advantage shows that Intel should be 17% faster, that's actually pretty good on the, the Ryzen chip. Um, you know, in theory, that means that the IPC improvement is actually better on Ryzen than it is is 
on uh, on the Intel side. But either way, nonetheless, um, the the impressive thing is obviously that it is 15% faster. It is the undisputed gaming and everything else champion on the sort of desktop level platforms. But the, the big caveat here is that it's literally 100% more expensive. Right now, you can buy one of these 9900Ks for just shy of or basically 600 pounds or likely 600 dollars give or take um depending on you know when you watch this and all that jazz um but you can buy an amd ryzen 2700x for less than 300 pounds at the time of filming which means that you get a 15 percent imp uh, performance improvement for 100 percent more money so yeah if you want the best of the best it's there if you've got the money to spend on it. So if you have any thoughts on this uh, this new launch or uh, you know the comparison in between or you want to just see anything else tested let me know in the comments down below. I would love to have a chat with you about the different uh, you know chips themselves and uh, if they're worth the money. Um, yeah that'd be, a, that'd be an interesting thing to, to hear from you. Um, as I said leave that in the comments down below. You can also subscribe for more videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday with live streams every Thursday and we have plenty of other videos over here for you to check out too. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos and doing all of this testing because it takes a while uh, then you can check out the links in the description there's a patreon link where you can support me directly or you can use the amazon and overclockers uk affiliate links which all massively help me out they're all free for you to use they don't cost you anything but they do genuinely help me a lot so thank you to everyone who uses them there's also private internet access which is a great vpn and i have an affiliate link down below and humble bundle and stuff like that so if you want cheap games there's that too um, but yeah that's kind of that really um, i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions as I said leave them in the comments down below and we'll see you in the next one